All right, next up we've got bubble charts. Bubble charts are really, really similar to scatter plots. The only difference is that they add a third dimension, which is the size of the bubble, to the original scatter plot format. So whereas a scatter plot plots x and y values, the bubble chart essentially plots x, y, and z, where z is the size of the points or the markers. So some examples here, maybe you're plotting product sales on your x-axis, revenue on your y-axis. You could use something like market share as the size of your bubbles, where each bubble represents a company. Or you could look at income per capita on your x, life expectancy on your y, and population as your size by country. So pro tips in terms of bubble charts, you do have the option to use custom color formatting uh, as a fourth dimension to even further differentiate categories. Just keep in mind that if it doesn't add any value or if it's not really necessary, it may just make the picture a bit more complicated than it needs to be. A second pro tip, you can use cell formulas and form controls to create dynamic animated bubble charts. That's a really interesting way to add the element of time to this as well. So let's bounce back to Excel and actually build one of these things. All right, so we'll head on back to our scatter plot and bubble chart tab since we'll use the same data set here to build a new bubble chart. And one thing to note is that since bubble charts are designed to really showcase and feature the relative size of each bubble, if you have a chart with hundreds or thousands of data points, those relative sizes are going to get very much drowned out. So what I'm going to do is build a new bubble chart from scratch and only show the teams from the year 2000. That will limit my number of observations to about 30, which is a much more reasonable number of data points to showcase. So let's go ahead and start from scratch and we'll insert a bubble chart. You can do 3D or 2D. In this case, I'll just start with 2D. And I'm going to put it over here where I have some empty space make it nice and large. So if I right click and select the data and add a series, here you can see my options. Give it a series name, X and Y values, just like a scatter plot, and then my third dimension, the series bubble size. So a series name, let's call it MLB Teams 2000. My X values, go into our selector here, it will be the same two variables that I used in my second scatter plot down here. So it will be run differential, which in this case will be I2 through I31, which is the last uh, row in the year 2000. And then my Y values will be wins over that same time period, K2 through K31. And then finally, the series bubble size in this case, I want the relative size of each bubble to reflect the salary of each team. So that's in column M. So my bubble size will be M2 through M31. I'm going to hit OK. Let's see what we've got so far. The bubbles are a little large, but we can adjust that uh, in just a moment. First, let's take care of these axes. So same two issues we had before, where we're crossing at 0, and we need to set some axis minimums. So I'll start with my x, and why don't we set a minimum here to negative 200 in this case. And we'll have the vertical axis cross at that minimum of negative 200. And then for wins on my y-axis, you can go ahead and put a minimum of 40 wins right there. So it's starting to come together. As usual, we're going to go into our chart elements, add some titles. Primary vertical is wins. I'm going to add a primary horizontal as well for run differential. Now if I right click the actual bubbles themselves, I can format the data series. And I have some special options here. Uh, so I can scale the bubble size, or I can change the size representation from area to width. If I actually change it to width, it creates a little bit more differentiation between the larger and smaller bubbles. So I'll stick with that option. I also want to scale these down, so let's make it 50% scaled. Um, that will just separate them a little bit and allow me to see some more differences between teams. And last but not least, I want to add some labels because I don't really know which bubble is which unless I hover over it. So I can get a little bit fancy here and add data labels. And then when I go into format those, 
I don't really want the series name. That's just MLB Teams 2000. Don't really want the X or Y values. Bubble size is the salary. None of these are really doing it for me. So what I'm going to choose is value from cells. And then I'm going to select this range with my team IDs, which is basically just a shorthand version of the team name. So same array, essentially, in column C. So C2 through C31. Now each of these team IDs is associated with the data in the bubble chart. So now it's added the team names, and I can get rid of the Y values and the leader lines. I could position those right in the middle of the bubbles if I choose. Um, so there you go. Now I see which teams had the highest salaries by which ones were the largest. And I can see some interesting trends like San Francisco performed really, really well, the most wins out of any team. And it was about middle of the pack as far as salary is concerned. So why don't we go ahead and just add a trend line here. I'll format it kind of the same way. Keep it linear, make it an orange trend line. And just like before, we can go ahead and format that trend line and display the R squared value right here. So R squared 0.88, it's a really, really strong fit, especially just looking at the year 2000. So there you go, that's a bubble chart. It adds a new element and a new dimension of insight to a traditional scatter plot.